home renovation and home renovations that might hurt you and more importantly hurt your values so Darren do you want to kind of introduce it and then we'll we'll jump into it with this uh, sure yeah well this article uh, we thought it was interesting it, it's you're, you're often hearing about you know how to get the most value out of prepping a property and we talk a lot about preparing a property for sale mm -hmm. again another article that kind of pulls it together but um, we definitely have, we're hovering over to give our perspective on, this is about what not to do um, and where not to invest your money in preparation. Um, and there, there's some good reasons for each of them and we'll kind yeah. of go through them. But from a, a, the broader perspective, uh, outside of the article even, you know, understanding a local buyer the the ideal local buyer is what we always talk about and how you prepare a home to target that buyer uh and that's where doing some renovations uh, or very personalized renovations can can move away from connecting with that uh -huh. ideal buyer who will pay the most for a house right you know um this is reminding me darren you know i mentioned earlier you know whether it's this week or in the future, um, this is a tough one for sellers, uh, not only to make the right choices, you know, utilize the right budget, maximize it, but thinking ahead, like, and that's tough to do, right? Maybe you're, you're three, four years away from selling. Maybe you don't even know you're going to sell, but you know, how to keep that in context in the moment of being a homeowner, but also being, you know, from the other side, the buyer. And making the right choices that's a tough one yeah. for sure and you know we'll we'll talk about some of these renovations and they they hone in on you know their very personalized renovations can be some of the biggest issues from a resale perspective but hey if you want to personalize your home and it might uh, be an issue when you go to sell that's your choice to do obviously just right. know that it may you may not get it in return uh, right. if you do it in a certain way. Or you might find Darren and Joe a couple months before you're <laughs> going to sell, kind of setting it up for the next buyer and helping you make those good choices at the end. <laughs> Gosh, right. that's, that's, um, uh, we, we're, we're Shameless pretty good plug. at that. Yeah. I, I, yeah, well, <laughs> I, I'm thinking of a specific case where we haven't a mm. hundred percent mastered that because people, this is one of the difficulties of being an agent. People personalize their own space, that they've lived in it, that they've improved it. They want to share all that right. with you. And, you know, look, this I, I think I say this at least once in every show. Yeah. And I've got to say <laughs> some of the perception from the seller on what they have and haven't done, really, it doesn't matter. You know, I spent all this time and all this money here and it's, it seems obvious. I want to, to be us. recognized for that. It's like, okay, yeah, it, it's recognized. It's not going to get you any more money on the sale. Yeah. And you should put money here. And they're like, I don't want to do that. It's like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm listening to you, but at least hear me out. Right. Because um, we, we do have the experience and this should help net you more money. In the end, we're trying to get you right. the most on the sale. So. Uh, welcome to our world. There you are, guys. So, um, all right. Well, let me get into this a little bit, and I'll just highlight, and we can comment as we as we planned. Uh, so, yeah, twenty home renovations that will hurt your home's value. This is from Yahoo Finance, and uh, let me just read the first couple paragraphs. Uh, your home isn't a isn't just a source of pride or a place where you can relax after a long day. It's also an, an investment in your family's future. So, and while it's natural to make improvements to increase your home's resale value, some renovations will actually cost you money in the long run. Just because you see something as an improvement doesn't mean a potential buyer will feel the same way. So yeah, then it goes, find out which renovations are the ones to avoid. So let's get into it. It's always um, nice to hear somebody else say it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You're not crazy, exactly. Yeah, um, I feel sometimes. <laughs> all right, so first one on this list is lavish lighting fixtures. Now, Darren, I'm in the middle of this, you know, helping my mom's home get sold. And uh, yeah, I'm going to keep it nice and plain. In fact, I sold the lighting fixtures <laughs> that were there. Right. <laughs> so. right. And, you know, that is in certain rooms, dining, uh, in, in much of a house, bedrooms, dining rooms, maybe living rooms, maybe yep. there aren't a lot of um, 
elements to invest in other than, you know, flooring and walls, maintenance. You could go mm -hmm. as far as windows. and yeah. um, But uh, the lighting fixture can be one of the permanent components that is really uh, an accent in some way. Mm -hmm. So I there there's something we always say uh, I, that I would put even ahead of a lavish lighting fixture. And we almost always recommend removing fans. Yeah. Unless you have really high ceilings. If you have really high ceilings, it's okay. But other than that, it shrinks a room. Right. Um, so for those of you considering selling, keep that in mind. Uh, even if as practical as it may be, even as mm. functional as it may be, the new person coming in could buy their own fan and install it. Um, but keeping it simple, uh, you know, you want to stay with things you want to be aware of are if there are other elements in the room. Uh, meaning that if you have a certain hardware style, if you have all chrome uh, handles and doorknobs and fixtures, you know, be aware that maybe it's good to match, maybe it's good to contrast, mm. but be aware of how those other elements relate to lighting fixtures and keeping it simple is good. It's an easy replacement for most people coming in, and I don't know that it really adds a lot of value. Okay, all right. So next one is, and this sounds kind of obvious, but uh, too much wallpaper. Yeah. With its patterns and textures, wallpaper can be an overwhelming design choice for your home. So what do you say about that? Well, you, you know, if you walk into a house that had wallpaper from the 60s, um, that's, that's a good example for two reasons. Number one, they would do like every wall in a space. Right. Uh, they did not hold back at all. And number two, it's just that style of wallpaper in many cases, not all of them, because some of it is pretty awesome. Um, mm -hmm. You're just saying that it doesn't match my choice of finishes or style and design. Wallpaper yep. is very popular now. Um, yep. We just staged a house where there was wallpaper and the accent wall that had it was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, it's a bold statement. Yeah. Um, if you're going to do wallpaper, uh, you know, mm. I almost feel like, and it's, you want to have a designer to make sure it all matches because often when you make that bold of a statement and it doesn't match the rest of the space that's yeah. when it yeah. doesn't help the sale at all well just like you were saying about the hardware and matching uh, yeah uh, that 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 one element's got to continue somewhere around the house to really make it cohesive you're totally right man. yeah right a simple design component you want to make it look like and this is the difficult thing about remodeling over time when you live in a space mm. is that you know, there's there's generational things that come out. Things get yeah. better. Cars get better. Everything gets better over time or different yeah. and there are more options. Yeah. And then you lose the cohesion throughout the house and that's where it becomes an issue. It doesn't look well thought out and planned. Right. Now, and you know, we'll, we will probably see some wallpaper later on, you know, looking at the active listings and the sold listings. Um, gosh, when it's done right, wow, it can look really, oh, really huge. good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, tricky, be careful for sure. Okay. Uh, the next one is texture on the walls and ceilings, just like wallpaper texture on walls and ceilings. It's difficult to remove simply knowing that a time consuming project lies ahead might cause home buyers to decrease their offer. Think twice before deciding on a fancy textured painting technique and play around with textured wall decor instead. Okay. Anything there? Right. So, I mean, I probably I'm, I'm seeing this article, we're going to continue to reference the past. Okay. Mm. In the 60s and 70s, it was all the rage to do textured ceilings. Mm -hmm. I, I, I have not known one property I've walked in that had it. And I mean this sincerely, not one person has walked in and said, that's amazing. <laughs> I, I just love that ceiling. Right. Okay. It's that's always... amazing popcorn. <laughs> How do I get rid of that? What's involved? Does it have asbestos? I mean, that's the conversation. Yeah. Um, you know, texture walls are probably easier than ceilings, but um, just be aware. All right. And uh, when, when uh, was it 19, after 1970, there was no asbestos in popcorn? Was that, what, what year was it? I don't know the transition year. I know the, the product variation meaning that it, the, the product used to have uh -huh. almost like a concrete 
consistency. It was like stucco. You'd put it on, it was really thick, it was heavy. Uh-huh. Uh, and then that changed. It went to a very, this is where it gets the term popcorn. It's the newer version. It's lighter, it's airy. You could spray water on it to remove it. The other stuff you had to mud over or put drywall uh, over. You couldn't remove it. Certainly the it. older version all had asbestos. Okay. All right. Quirky tiling is the next one. Any over-personalized renovation can hurt the value of a home, especially something like tiling, which requires more effort and money to replace, said Bob Gordon, realtor and blogger at Boulder Real Estate right. News. This is going to be one of those, it's a bold statement. It'll appeal to some, not to others. Mm. Or if you don't have a designer, I, I, you know, sometimes you're making... Homeowners are making choices on products because they're saving a few bucks per square foot. And, you know, that's not going to help when it comes time to sell. Yeah. And trends change. And But whatever. If that's what you want to do when you're living in the house, you do it. Just realize, yeah. you know, when somebody comes to evaluate your home for sale, you should have somebody that, an agent that has a strong perspective, yeah. knowing what buyers want. And they're going to tell you whether that's helping or hurting the sale. And then yeah. you can choose what to do at that point. Well, that's the thing, right, Darren? It's like, uh, as a, as an owner, it's hard to keep a context for everything. And I think here, what I usually see, and I know we've seen it many times, is uh, the, the, the tile, somebody fell in love with the tile, but they didn't really look at the rest of the house and see how it fit in. Right. Um, right. And yeah, it, it gets awkward, yeah, when you're trying to sell That's that. one of the things, I mean, look, we don't do complete remodels in spaces. Sometimes we'll do more than others, but one of the things that we often do is we're trying to come in and somehow infuse consistency and tie as much as we can together mm -hmm. to make it seem purposeful right. um, so that rooms do match, so that the house has an overall feel. All right, the next one, and this is one that I'm a little worried about from my little project now, is too much <laughs> carpeting. In an interview with Realtor.com, home remodeling expert Alex Bechevetsky said that new hardwood floors can increase the sale price of a home by up to 2.5 percent wow compared to hardwood and laminate floors carpet can quickly show signs of damage plus colors and textures are highly based on personal preference and any overly personal touches can decrease a home's value so what do you oh, look say? let's go back to the 60s yeah. shag carpet yeah <laughs> right yeah it was a great idea at the time um Look, I, I don't think I'll, almost no one wants carpet in a house these days. Um, it is about solid surface and then you can put in area rugs. Sometimes mm -hmm. you'll find bedrooms that are carpeted. I think that's OK. Yeah. Um, but even then, people will change that out. If you have old carpet, it's it's a real downer, mm. really. It, yeah. it really does devalue the space. Yeah. If you have brand new carpet, I think the the general approach to that is great. We'll change that room out, but it's mm -hmm. it's you're not you're not harboring twenty years of of everything that went on in that house right. in the floor. Funk, funk, and yeah, all of it. Bio, uh, bio so much what? funk. Bio yeah, what? yeah. Um, right. All right. Well, we'll see how it goes. I'm definitely, as you know, I'm finding something that's very uh, plain, that's very as universal as I can get, but. I got a lot of house to cover and I'm only picking it's up also some a, flooring. Right. It's also an area situation, mm -hmm. you know, depending on the region and what's expected in different areas, right. the, the issue you're dealing with makes yeah. sense. There's a good amount of smaller houses in the areas we sell in. Yeah. So, you know, make the flooring right uh, in the area you're working in. There's a lot of larger houses and that's a more affordable way to do things. Got so it. people in that area, I think, are more accepting of it. Well, we'll find out. Okay, next one is yeah. bright and bold paint colors. It's kind of obvious, but what do you have to say to that? What it is? Don't get any. I'll, I'll say that we we support almost almost every house being staged. So in the process of doing that, that's where you bring in the color, mm -hmm. because that color can go right out the door. And the person coming in doesn't have to deal with it at all. Mm -hmm. um, and nowadays, the majority of people paint accent walls, not entire rooms, uh -huh. in bold colors. And that can help. Right. Help sell a place if it's mm -hmm. the right color and, and the furniture matches and it, it all works. Cohesion. Together. Yeah. 
Yeah. All right. Uh, an extremely high end kitchen is the next one. Again, sounds obvious, right. but I think the issue now the issue there is look that's one of that's what we talked about early. If mm. that's what you want and you live in the house and obviously do what you're going to do, you may not get that in return when you sell, but that may not matter to you. If right. You so just the expectation want a really there. great kitchen. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's understanding, and we always talk about a house being, you know, you need the 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 daily energy that a house brings you. It inspires you. It you live in that space. Mm -hmm. You know, but in most cases, you should your investments in the space should be wise. But sometimes it it might inspire you more to have an amazing kitchen. So yeah. go for yeah, it. Yeah. You may just not get it all in return. Yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah. All right. Next one is a look. Well, same thing. A luxury bathroom. It is the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, next here is a home office conversion. Thanks to improved technology, more professionals have the opportunity to work from home, and some might consider creating a dedicated home office space to get the job done. If the new office was formerly a bedroom, this could be a costly mistake. So two things there. You know, it, it's when I think about a conversion mm. uh, for a home office, where I think it is a true negative uh, is when you get the the full built-ins. When you're getting the built-in desk and cabinets uh, and bookshelves, yeah, yeah, which you don't see many people doing these days. Right. Um, maybe if you have a five, six bedroom house, you could truly dedicate a room to an office and go all out like that. Right. But if someone needs to possibly use it as a bedroom, the built-ins could be a turnoff. We have actually right. uh, worked on a house where somebody did just that. It was a two bedroom house. It was set up as an office and they came in. They're like, this is a one bedroom house. They really, in their mind, it was a right. one bedroom house. And that's where it hurts you when it's sure. so commi committed. Yeah. Often with our staging, one of the most common things we do, because so many people do work from home these days, is we do the, the, um, the, uh, the couch bed set up with a desk. Um, so it so looks you're seeing like, a couple uses out of it. Exactly. So you're not fully committed to both. But people walk in and they see and they're thinking, oh, somebody could sleep there. And they're also seeing there's room for a desk. And they know, I mean, they know they can go either way with it. Yeah. Okay. Next one is combining bedrooms to create a bigger room. Right. A very customized thing to do. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those, it works for me. It's what I want. Go for it. Just right. know that, and we've had this situation, you're potentially reducing the value of your home. Right. Particularly when you're doing, a, you're removing a bedroom. It's just fewer mm -hmm. bedrooms. Now, there are a lot of people buying luxury. We've, we've seen homes that, you know, multi-million dollar homes that have two bedrooms. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, now, the issue is there, you just reduce your pool of potential buyers. It could be the perfect match for somebody who wants two bedrooms and a huge common space or, a, or desires a master right. and it all works. And you could get the maximum amount if that person is looking in the market at that time and sees your house, if all right. of that aligns, but you're probably reducing the, yeah. the quantity of buyers. And we, once you reduce yeah. that funnel, it just reduces your odds of getting the highest return. And maybe too, with some foresight, I mean, if that's really something you want to do, uh, maybe that is one of the, the adjustments you make before sale, right? Is to bring that Go third back. bedroom back. Yeah, and, absolutely. And, and put the wall back. Yeah. And sometimes that could be the plan. Exactly that, Joe. And you know that when you convert it, we're going to mm -hmm. sell in 10 years and retire. And we did this conversion. And if you have that foresight, you're preparing it, that it, it's an easy conversion back. Got it. Okay. Next one is removing closets. Same situation. If yeah. you have no closet in a room, you officially don't have a bedroom. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Next one. <laughs> I'm thinking of uh, our client. A sunroom addition. Yes, it sure. Can be, can be a great space to enjoy the outdoors away from the elements, but according to remodeling, a sunroom addition is one of the worst home renovations when it comes to return on investment. With the cost of an additional of an addition exceeding approximately seventy five thousand dollars, while only adding just over thirty five thousand to the value of the house. 
Right. If you, if you want it and you're going to live with it and you're going to enjoy it, just know you're not getting it in return. Yeah. And right. I'm thinking of our client. I mean, it makes a lot of sense for the small house that they have. So absolutely. It, it, it made it their, their house. Better. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, wow. Of course not. Built in aquarium. <laughs> with a mermaid. It's a ridiculous example. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Built in high end electronics. Any comment there? Yeah, kind it's of... one of those. If if you've got somebody who comes in who really likes it, but the the issue I would say specifically with electronics, and it applies to bathrooms and kitchens as well, mm. is that that stuff turns over so fast. The trends oh, right. in those things change, yep. and it gets specifically with electronics. It's always getting better. So. Right. Probably if you installed it, by the time you're ready, you didn't install it to sell. Yeah. Okay? So yeah. it's probably going to be old by the time you go to sell. Right. Yeah. I'm thinking of like initially, I mean, we see it, right? People put in the Nest thermostat. They put in, uh, you know, uh, a low cost, uh, you know, alarm system. Um, it, it doesn't hurt the environment too much, but there is some automation that people look at now that kind of appeals to them. But yeah, don't go overboard. Yeah. And all these things are, are reasonably affordable, allow you to monitor your space, be more energy efficient. All those things are great. Yeah. yeah. But then again, those things will also change. Mm. Technology from one year to the next is dramatically different. Yeah. yeah. All right. Next one, a swimming pool. <laughs> so what do you think of this? You know, I... <sighs> I'll say this, the homes, the expectations have risen a bit and, mm -hmm. and we, a lot of the areas we serve had no swimming pools. We, we work in a large geography, so some areas have a higher expectation of that. But I think price points and people coming from different areas, I think west side to LA um, is the most common dynamic I see. And people spending a lot more time at home and socializing yeah. at home, I think they're yeah. shifting a little bit. I think there are more people that are wanting and expecting pools. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I don't know if so, you saw this, but... Uh, you know, it could the, be... Oh, I, let me just throw this in. There's actually now... I think they're from Australia, but there's actually now an Airbnb-like service for pools. So if you wanted to rent what somebody's... You mean? Oh, you mean you can you, use someone's pool? Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. And that's it. <laughs> So, wow. I like that. I like that. You get the no pool house that. too, or just the pool? <laughs> I, I, it depends, I guess, right? How much money do you have? But yeah. <laughs> right. Wow. So, uh, yeah, you know, it mentions here, you know, if you've got children, it, it might be more advantageous. Uh, but yeah, you know, there's a limited time for that as well. So, all right. Next one is, well, same idea a hot tub. Anything a little different I'm about a I'm hot just... tub? Go ahead. No, I think hot tubs are, you know, people will either be great or how do I haul that thing away? I, yeah. I think I've written more offers where in the offer it said hot tub must be removed. Right. <laughs> <laughs> than clients being excited about it, though. Yeah, it's a pain to get rid of. Uh, so. All, right. All right. Next yeah. one is uh, a garage to gym or living space conversion. For a fitness lover, a garage to gym conversion might seem like a wonderful idea. To parents of a millennial who just moved back home, a garage to apartment conversion probably seems like a money saver. But future home buyers might not agree. I think the only time I think that that's an issue is if you're, again, if you're in a huge house where you don't need more space, um, or if you do something like in the office where if you make something so permanent that it seems costly to remove or burdensome or people can't visualize the space being used as its mm -hmm. original intention just as a garage mm -hmm. but finishing a garage drywalling painting the floors um it's fantastic Those you drive great. your car into a beautiful space yeah. or you can use it for something else okay um this is one I think I'm going to be running into. The wrong landscaping investment. <laughs> well, so you did a lot of cleanup, Joe. I know if you're talking about your current project. Yeah, but it still but, looks messy. 
Yeah, the question is always how far do you go? Um, you know, simple is better when it comes to landscape or if you have a more complex design. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we joke about, there's one joke we've had consistently, and that is investing in 100 pots probably is not the way to go. Um, <laughs> right. That's definitely not the way to go. Right. Um, I think simplicity in the yard is, is typically good. Most mm -hmm. of the projects we help people with, it's simplifying the space. It's having singular focal points. If you're going to have dense, lush landscaping, um, it's there's a design component to landscaping. People don't think about that. There yeah. are trendy plants. There were you can look at the fifty. You can go into some neighborhoods and go, yeah, that was planted in the fifties. Mm -hmm. You drive down the street. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know anybody other than for hedge purposes planting ficus trees and letting them grow to eighty feet anymore. Right. Um, so yeah, be wise, uh, yeah. with the investment there. It can be costly. I mean, you can spend yeah. $50,000 on a landscape project reasonably easy. And I think what really costs you ends up being the hardscape. So just keep mm -hmm. that in mind. Okay. Next one is, uh, beautiful, but messy trees. Yeah. I, I don't know what to say about that. My favorite tree is the Chinese elm drops leaves all year round, but it pro provides shade all year round. And I like shade. Um, right. <clears throat> so, yeah, whatever. So, yeah, basically, it's, yeah, stay away from certain trees. Uh, oak, female ginkgo biloba, sweet gum, locust tree, eastern white pine. Uh, again, back to landscaping choices. In L.A., it might be, you know, one of the trees that's interesting is mm -hmm. uh, planting like a native oak tree. That might seem like the best thing ever, and it looks beautiful. But if you want to, if it gets X so big, and you want to add to your property, you can't remove it. Right, you're stuck. Yeah. All right, next one is uh, <laughs> DIY repairs. Don't we know that? Yeah, next uh, and last one. Yeah. So, what it comes down to there is every home that sells is going to be inspected. Is mm -hmm. the bottom line. Got it. Um, we're, we're, we're good on the surface at highlighting these and helping repair them, but, but know that that's one of those moments you talk about, I talked about the, the seller moment early on. Mm -hmm. That is, is when the seller comes to you and says, yeah, I, I just did this entire project. I remodeled this entire room myself. Yeah. And my immediate response is please don't, please don't tell the buyers that. We're not going to promote that. Um, unless you're doing it every day, some things are going to be missed. Some things right. are going to be done wrong uh, and they're going to come up yeah. uh, at a time of inspection. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I'm thinking of somebody in particular, like, uh, you know, he is an AC tech. He has been an AC tech for, gosh, man, maybe 30, 40 years. Does he know how to deal with tile? I have no idea. But yeah, his natural tendency will be to fix everything. It's just in him. Yeah, it's right. hard. Right. It's moving on to tangential things that, you know, maybe uh, one right next to it is good, but then you think I'm going to move on to the next one that's adjacent to that. It starts getting too far away from your primary yeah. skill set. Yeah. I think too, because yeah. this, <clears throat> this happens when we <laughs> look at homes, is um, the simplest list, starts growing into other things and you can feel overwhelmed if you are doing it yourself um, it starts growing that list so yeah again in preparation we're always looking for mm. cohesion mm. if if your home has you know if you have the kitchen remodel bathroom remodel and you haven't upgraded flooring we're saying well look these two spaces are amazing i think you should put the money into the flooring the whole house will be cohesive and you'll get the highest price Right. But if you have, you know, it's when things are not at the same level where you're mm -hmm. just trying to bring a cohesive presentation to get the highest amount at that level that will attract the buyer who will pay the most for that. The components that the house offers. All right. Well, that's the end of the article. Uh, hopefully you got something out of that and uh, we give you some good opinions. Um, you know. As Darren has said in the past, depending upon where you are regionally and whatnot, there might be more important things on that list, but uh, these are some, some good ones to consider all the way around.